Hey, I know we've been in here a long day, so I'm going to, uh, all day, and the beer's, the beer's cold, and I know my ass is sore, so all I'm going to do is, we, everybody kind of gives a little history lesson when we get up here, but about 88 or 89, back Coach the best, when I, Coach and I, the best and I were together, we started running crossing routes, so what I'm going to do is talk a little bit about our crossing routes, where we've kind of gone from there, and I think the first thing, the first thing that we have, at least I, everybody always worries about is protections. I mean, real quickly, and Coach Nall or even Matt Luke right there, I'm going to show some tapes when, when we had Matt, who's now the old line coach of Murray, playing center for us. Uh, I'll show some cut-ups there because he did a real nice job with the calls. But everybody's going to have seven-man protection, which we want, obviously, for blitz. You know, it's a man protection. All right, we're going to check release. We're going to get two backs. Uh, you know, two back, three wides, two back, tight end, all that kind of stuff. What we're going to basically do if we're not play action, a man protection. All right, but then we also want to have a six-man protection. And we've been doing six-man protection for a while, and we've stayed with it. I know a lot of guys stay in six-man protections and, and stay man protection, but we want to be a slide protection and for a couple things. Uh, to me, I don't want this guy... I don't want my guy's life depending on that guy. I just don't. You know, I don't want this guy saying, well, if the backer comes, you got this guy. And I don't like, you know, having to bring guys back in the box and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to slide it. We're going to double key to both sides. All right? And then on top of that, it really fit because it was an easy progression for us to get to our five-man protection or no-back protection. Because we like to, in this set, which seems to be kind of a very popular set these days, whether it's three by one or two by two. Uh, we want to give the deep we want to give the defense as many different looks with this guy as we can so they can't try to scheme us protection wise. In other words, bringing four from the side, you know, all that kind of mambo Japanese shit that the defensive guys like to do. So what we want him to be able to do is protect, you know, either that way or to the same side in a six man uh, surface. And then we also want to be able to free release him to either side. So we want when they're going to bring four from the side, not knowing exactly what he's going to do. So you've got to count. You just can't say, I'm bringing him, because he's got to be in protection. All right? So, I mean, this is, this is uh, I'm sure everybody here right, runs slide protection, but just real quick to show you how it fits with our, our no back or our what we call rip or list protection, our freedom uh, protection. We want to free release this guy. All right? On top of that, one of the reasons we would like to free release that guy is most of our passing game is going to come off is our crossing series. We're big, what you call it, layers or crossers or shallow cross. You know, I see everybody I watch that does some form of it. Um, when they get to where we force them into, two, into five guys in the box, right, we want to create as many windows as we can, and we feel by pre-releasing this guy is that we get guys expanded in here, right, open things up for our quarterback, where we can find little windows and just throw all those little chicken shit and passes in there. Right. In our odd or even protection, we like to offset our back, so that right there would be even protection for us. And now we're just, you know, three to one side, three to the other side deal. We're going to double key, you know, one to two with our center. It's basically your uncovered guy. So our centers are uncovered. He's a point. You know, we'll come out and always point in all our protection where the kind of apex of the protection starts. And we're going to work one to two with these three. All right? They're not going to worry about that guy until the tackle tells them to worry about it. Because I think the worst thing that you can do is when you have dual read guys, is you start kicking guys out of there because he's got one to two and he's got his head on a swivel and looking for all this shit. And these some bitches right here are, are pressing the A gap and giving your quarterback a bunch of problems. So we want to be as firm as we can right here. So he knows he's going to get a call with the guard. They're going to double, all right, that shade or that two technique right there to his point. All right, if this guy tells him, hey, there's some problems on the outside here with a, what we make a bingo call. Isn't that right, Matt? Bingo call. All right, now we're going to worry about it. All right, now we're thinking, hey, possible four from the side or an outside blitzer. Well, hopefully, my guy's got a little key to it because they got a stack of safety. So all that two safety, one safety, zero safety stuff. All right. Here's our uncovered guy here. He's also one to two. 
The other thing I like what Hugh does with it is even though he may be a double key guy, all right, to the left right there, if he's got a three technique on that guard, I, there's no need for my center to help him. All right, so this guard will ask for his help. Say the shades to that side. So now he's going to make a ray call, all right, but still to his point. All right, so the center, so we're trying to keep it as firm right here. I can deal with these guys in the A's and B gap. My guy can. The guy, you know, if we can handle them, my guys can deal with the outside guys. I can step up, get them pushed back, you know, drive them by the pocket or whatever. All right, so there's just straight odd or even protection, which is just slight protection. All right, well, it fit nice to us when we wanted to free release somebody. Now we want to free release our back to that side. Well, from here over, it's still out or even protection. All right, so this is still slide to these guys. Center four two look right there. All right. So from here over, no change. Still slide. They're Ray or Lou to that backer. He gets the tackle, hitting him that there's something happened. You know, quickest. You know, quickest rusher to my quarterback or whatever. I might make a fan call or whatever. But these three guys know they're going to protect that backside for me. A fourth guy coming, all right, safety should show me. To this side, well, he's the one to two guy there, but now he's one to two blocking him that way. So now my quarterback knows that that's his rip, what I just call him, his rip backer. All right, if he gets blitz or he gets any kind of movement by this guy, all right, we call that the boy. All right, now that's how, how, that's how I teach, you know, I don't really teach my, my guys don't really learn that, I mean, they kind of know it, but that's a hot guy, and if he comes, you got to throw it hot and all this stuff. What he learns is just play, play football, be smart. All right, if they void this, fill the void with the football. So anything we do when it's free release by this guy, which fits to our crossing game, is we're going to fill the void with, with, you know, our shallow cross, whether it's, you know, like this or like this or the backside guy, he knows he's going to have a boy right there. All right. If you guys have any questions on that? No, I'll, I'll, let me show you the film real quick on it. All right, what I'm going to put in first is... Uh, Coach? Yeah. How, how wide does the wide receivers line up? How wide? <laughs> Landmark. Ball in the hand. Uh, six yards from the boundary to the guy in the, I think, wherever it breaks in here. Six yards from the boundary, what's your base alignments? Into the boundary to be in a max alignment, which is bottom of the numbers. Inside receiver? Inside receiver would be in what we call a divided alignment, be splitting the difference between the top of the numbers and the hash. I, put, I pulled this tape from two years ago because, like I said, there's some good looks on this tape on, uh, on the rip and list protection. And for us, rip or list, if we want to empty that guy, there is no difference in the protection. All right, everybody's going to going to stay the everybody's going to stay the same in the protections. I want to show you this year we kind of took the shallow cross and tied our curl and our post game up into it. But this is the first thing we want to teach our kids is about filling voids with the football inside. If we're going to release five, is we don't want to always be having to check blitz and, and getting, you know, bringing guys down in and, and reading. I mean, basically he's reading hot, but he learns whether it's man. So, I mean, it could be a man indicator and not blitz or a deep zone drop because we just want to fill the zone, uh, fill the void with the football. 
And so he's he's sitting. This is Liz protection, right? Liz protection right here. So now this this guy that center there knows he's a one to two guy. Right? He's going to take the first threat to the quarterback. My guy knows here's the boy. That's his Liz backer. If this guy voids, fill fill the void. Simple, right? He's also got to know is they've got to bring four from a side to get him. So hopefully there's some major uh, secondary adjustment to show him four from a side. Right? Even if he sees it and misses it, he's still got a built-in hot. He knows he's always got a crossing right there to get the ball to him. Right? So, so, so the center right here, he's one to two. Here comes his Mike Backer. All right, and there's the boy. And I'll, talk, I'll show you guys later uh, if you want to uh, kind of what the rules are on the route. One more time, Coach. Okay, the base rule is this. Crosser on this side, right, and it hasn't changed since the best thing I was doing this is dig on the other side. That's his base rule. Base crosser, that's just Liz H right there. All right, Liz H. That's Trey Wright and Liz H. Okay, same thing, right? We're double keying. There's our hot guy, or our Liz Backer. He's not blitzing, but he's voiding. Fill the void. They got a spread. All right, right there, there's his Liz Backer. All right, he knows if he comes, all right, some, I mean, we're gonna <coughs> fill the void. All right, or if he drops, or if he chases this guy, man, all right, we're gonna have somebody, and it could be him, could be him, could be him, could be him. We don't know. It's whoever you want in there, all right? Depending on what type of route, inside crosser, outside crosser. He's going to fill the void. Now, here's a center. I don't know if Matt's still in here or not. But here's a uh, here's a uh, loop call because he wants to help right here. But he got an on call out here by this guy. All right, he got an on call because here's what they all want to do to you, right? Double stack and spread, you know, and dick with you. Bring this guy and drop that safety down and all that kind of stuff. All right. Well, the mic slid to here, so that's not the center's guy, that's my guy. All right, that's my Liz guy. He got an on call or a bingo call from this guy all right, with a three technique there. Now he should be Lou, Lou, Lou right here helping this guard with his head and eyes right to this guy. And then he'll dual read out to him. But he's gonna stay in those A gaps as long as he can. This is the tray again. So it's the same deal should make a loop call right here. There's his backer. There's our Liz backer. Does he void? Yeah, he voids. Give him the football. Okay, now he's got two safeties. Now he's got two backers in there. Those were one backer when the spread was a one backer look. He's got a single safety, so he knows six in the box. So now, he's, what this guy's thinking is, it's still rip protection. Right here, that center knows he's that backer to that backer. Well, we're not worried about that guy because where he's lined up. So all they know is that we should have, he should have these three blocked. Right? What does this guy, this guy does? He gives him a man indicator, but he knows he's got a Mike backer in there. There's one safety. So now we're just going to layer or high low or whatever you want to call it, the Mike backer. If he jumps this. We're there now. This is all this. I mean, this thing kind of. You talk to guys, and what really helped us this year is why I talked to Sonny. We talked to Sonny up there in Kentucky, right? And this this route got better for us when we stopped this bullshit right here by this guy, all right? Now we take him, all right, which is how they do it, and we run it. We we have him run right through the heels of that defensive lineman. Right, it's kind of like uh, um, Arizona's Dino's. Uh, uh, route, you know, his cross route, is that he's got to come underneath this Mike Backer at all costs. <coughs> but it's just a e nice, easy, high, low read for us. No, you took the tap out of the wide <coughs> out. Hmm? Did you take the tap out of the wide out? They're coming right now. Instead of tapping at the line of scrimmage, <coughs> are they just coming right now? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, here's an outside crosser from the boundary. 
But anyway, we, I mean, this, this is just another outside cross from the boundary. So it's just all your shallow cross stuff. All right, so it'd be crosser, big, right, stretch. All right, we like this guy right here. If it's man to run the fade, if it's zone to run the hash. He's really wrong right there. He should be running this hash. To keep this guy off the dig. Right, here's one. Mike Mike jumps across the outside cross from the boundary. Go to the dig. But we're gonna we want to run this 100 million times so they start feeling the kids start feeling good about running that. Now we can go to our curl game. Coach, I think it's the dig. The dig's at 10 yards. There's a, that's, a, that's no difference right there. That's a rip protection. We just emptied the back, I believe. Rip protection, and there's Z. Rip Z. So we're, we're just trying to trying to high low the mic back. Right, let me let me go through this here. Okay, now here's the one thing you've got to do is is I don't know some of you guys are all doing this stuff, but. We, the only thing you've really got to got to worry about is to this two-man side in rip protection. Because right? what they're going to start doing to you is what these guys are doing right here. So they're going to start taking the five technique <coughs> and sending him to the back and bringing the backers and try to waste your tackle. Right? So when he, get, when he does not come, we consider him the uncovered guy to that side. Hugh could give you all the ins and outs of it. Right? So when he's got a threat, a B-gap threat right here. If he's sitting out there, he's not worried about it. But when, when this backer becomes a B-gap threat, we need him to sit straight back all right, and take the most dangerous. All right, and all, all we need to do is get a piece of it because usually when this is happening, it's some sort of man coverage. We're filling the void anywhere. Here comes the void from the backside. Now, he's, deep, he's too deep right there. He should be screaming his ass off right here, catching the ball. That's a pretty good job by the right tackle. The guy that's filling the void, do you have some depth or he's trying to get across? Yeah, he's got to come underneath. He's probably three yards deep. You know, he's not going to get any deeper than three yards. Are you, are you teaching him on that release? The receiver's one, two, or is it? No. You're just saying, go. Just go. I'll show you that. I mean, like right there, he's like a one, two, go. Yeah, well, that's how we were last year. We, I said we talked to K uh, Kentucky, and it worked out. Right now. Yeah, it worked out a lot better for us. All right, now he's coming, right? Now, I don't know. Matt, are you in here? Good, because I talk bad about him now. All right. So right here's the only other thing Hugh teaches them. All right. So what what kind of call? What should he be getting right here? A bingo call, right? They're gonna take those three. There's my hot guy. One should be on the back, and if he voids, we fill the void. So it's pretty simple for my guy. All right? But what he should do right here is he should go ahead and, and give a fan call, because that's his only threat. That tackle should look look up and see that that guy's gonna blitz. See, that's somebody just three yards off my receiver, and he's right there, so he should be saying, on, on, on. Well, if he's in a shade or a two technique, it should be fan. If he's in a three technique, now we'll go ahead and kick the center out. You see, the center's going to get caught up on that two technique or one technique. See him trying to get there? He can't get there. All right, now just fill the void right there. That was just a crosser. I mean, that, that wasn't a side adjust. That's his route. Because he's filling the void. He's right? filling the void. All, somebody's always going to fill the void. Right, now you can see the center right here. All right, now he pops out, gets that. Here's my Liz backer. All right, if they both come, ain't nobody covering him. All right, he voids, fill it. No, you can set them any way you want. The, the first rule we kind of start out with is we always send them to an inside crosser and away from an outside crosser for whatever reasons. But that's kind of when we first put it in, we started that way. But now we put them, in fact, now we're starting to put them into the boundary a lot. These are just, these are all the same thing. Here, this is wrong by this tackle. See what he didn't do? I mean, we're, he should pop straight back and he should come in here and trap this guy right there. Trap him off the quarterback. Because he's the uncovered guy. All right, so now, now same look, we're running crosser, but, but now we're going to tag it with our cat game or our curl game. So he's still got the same read. Everybody's the same except him. So he's thinking now, 
fill the void, right? The backer runs, right? Fill the void. The void, there is no void, it's covered. Now work to the curl instead of the divot. Okay, is there a void? No, no void, no curl. Okay, you need to switch them up. That's just an outside crosser with the curl tied to it. Yeah, always swinging the back. Yeah, on this, on this, yeah, we're always swinging the back. Now, fronts, and then this is out. But we're going to put on. But now front sometimes are going to decide game plan is that we may we'll do the same thing, but 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 tag with a six man protection instead of always a five man protection. But we want everybody to at least know that we can do that. That that back can just haul ass out of there because we think it helps us with blitz. You know when they start setting their blitz up, they've always got to count that guy. They can't always say, hey, I've been four. That some of gun's going to stay in and block. He's got to come in and block. These are uh, quick, quick strings. I'm going to get to the our tiger stuff. Tiger. So then off our crosser, we want to go tiger or curl and post now. Get the ball down the field. So now here's the here's the post. All right, we want to start. Okay, it's going to look like crossers. Should look like crossers right here. Okay, start to look like crossers to this side. All right, dig, but we adjust the dig because now we've got posts. He's a read. He's a read post now. All right, if he's got a safety sitting hard here, it should turn to to dig. If he's got one safety, now he wants to jump that safety. Now we're going to get the back in the flat to the other side and just try to put a skinny post like Colorado State. Just, you know, we're just kind of the same thing. We're just seven steps, throw it. Is that when we throw the post, unless it's even when it's man, is that we like to post in the guy's hands by the time it gets like 24 yards. If it's the field, 18 yards if it's to the short side, like that one. No, this is uh, it's just slant, deeper slant. Crossing, you always in a gun? Yeah, we've come to that. Come to that. Then. Yeah, we've come to that. We've, we've done it not in a gun before. Okay, here he just changed the protection, but the call here was 
probably Liz or Odd, right? It snaps Tiger X or H, I don't know which one, but to be the crosser. But he's thinking the same thing. I mean, he don't, he don't care if it's blitz or, or whatever. He probably changed protection because to that gap protection because he felt it was blitz because right, the way the safety came down. Right, but he's leaving it on. What, and all he needs to know is where the mic is. Mike voided. Go to the void. This is what everybody's trying to do to us now in all our process stuff is try to get that safety involved. All right now, but now so so we, as you saw we run crossers, all right? Rip. If we were to run rip H, it would be crosser, dig. All right, well now we just tied the curl and the post game into the crossers. So we've got Panther on this side and we got Tiger on this side. All right, so to give him, if I tag it, if I tag it Tiger, now he knows is that I'm gonna work, if Mike jumps this, I'm working the curl to the flat off this guy. If it's Panther, we tag it Panther, all right, now he's going to work the post to the dig on this side. But he's always going to have that void read in there. And now Mike jumps it. So now he's going to come to the curl. And his, the protection sent it back that way, no overload. So all, all we did was try to look the same, but get him to where he's working from the void, right, which he's going to learn from day one, crossers. He's always going to learn that we're going to put a guy in the void for you. All right. Now we're gonna work. We can work him to the curl. We can work him from the void to the dig. We can work him from the void to the post. Twelve yards, ten yards. Yeah, he's got to always be outside that numbers. That post is still skinny. It's still a skinny post. Seven steps. Yes, no matter who's running, it's always the same spot. Should be outside, about two yards outside the number. Like this one right here. This is just like he was reading the crossers. The Mike Boyd's, but is the crosser covered? Yeah. I mean, he should work. This is Tiger. He should be working right now for the curl. Now Panther, all right? So now just like everybody's doing, you got the safety, you run a little hunt route or dig route in front of them to throw the post route over the top. Well, if he doesn't like it, it comes to the void. So it's, you know, that's still his crossing read right there. What's that? So this is like a scripted deal when you call Panther, it doesn't sound like it. You call that when the safety starts coming down and the Call Tiger when the safety starts coming down and playing the dick. Okay. Call Tiger. Call Panther when they start playing the you know, one free with six in the box. Right. You know, and hopefully, hopefully, you know, because this guy will be able to do it. You know, if he, if, if, if he saw, if he saw it was too deep, he just leave the crosser, so the call would like to be rip X. If he saw it too deep, he just leave rip X on, because all he got is a mic in there, so he can throw the high low on him. All right, if he saw, if he saw it was 
a cover, you know, a three deep look with six in the box. He probably want he probably want to tag it. He probably want to tag it with Tiger. So now you can work to, you know, just work a triangle with a weak side curl. Right? If he saw cover four, he probably want to tag a Panther because now he's going to try to hold that safety down, throw the post over the top. Is he going to make that call in the last scrimmage? Yeah. How many times on average is there a I mean, variation of cross Not enough, but I bet over the years probably out of, say, 35 throws, you know, 15 to 20 of them would be crossers or more. When you, when you tag Panther, you're still running the Tiger the other side, right? No. No. What else I got on? Oh. What did you call this? <laughs> so. <laughs> so. I don't know if that makes any sense. But I'm hey, you know, the important thing is it makes sense to me and Bob and the quarterback, right? That's it. That would be his base route right there. Liz, X, or H. All right. Now we tag it with Tiger. Okay. Now all we're telling him is we've got this working in the boundary. All right. Now your protection can your 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 front will tell you what type of protection you want to use. Whether you want to want to pre-release him or you want to use odd protection. I mean, it's not. I mean, all your these guys are the same anyway, right? All you tell all your quarterback or you're deciding your game plan is: Do I want to pre-release that guy right now, right, to, to get some sort of indicator in here real quick, you know, make him do that, or do I want to check, release him to the flat, or whatever you want to do right there? But that's just Tiger X or Tiger H, and then you know, Panther now is now we're just getting a free level to that side. He's still always thinking about the boy. We want to we, we want to throw it to four cross. four cross. Yeah, straight four cross the board. If we get cover two, which nobody ever sees anymore anyway, right? Now we want to just throw the crosser. We want to work on him. Right. If we get four cross, we'd like to work on him. If we get cover three, we'd like to work on the Willie Basher. Right into the boundary. What was the one? Was the one that goes to the guy going right? That's Panther. Yeah, yeah. You know what it's like? It's like stretch read to him. Yeah. Close to being a stretch read, right? You know, if he's got a guy over the top, he just bends in the middle. If there's a safety, he. You know, you'd stay. You'd stay on the hash, but we're going to try to go to the other half. Coach, so basically the quarterback is just doing a half field read there, based on his call at the line of scrimmage. Right. I mean, he's got the easy job, I think. If we're sitting like this. I, he knows if I call the Liz protection. I, he knows, and and when you think about it, it's no different than when you when anybody teaches a curl flat. When you teach curl flat, you're teaching the triangle and all that kind of stuff, you know. And and the first thing you teach is who's going to help the strong safety. If he helps a strong safety, I got to fill the void, you know, like that. All right? Well, it's the same. All right? We're just going to free release him. All he has to know is, all right, is that I'm good for three on that side. All right? The fourth guy's got to be some sort of movement out there. Right? Because most teams, if they're going to double stack you and give you a two deep safety, his mic is going to displace right there. Right? So now you're running, you know, your inside zone and all that stuff in there to him. 
Okay, so he knows. Hell, I'm gin. I'm I'm fine over here. There no there no no way they can get me. Okay, all I have to know now is whoever is in there. Shit, it may not be the mic. Whoever it could be a nickel guy, but there's a void right there. If they give me a man indicator, a blitz indicator, or just a deep zone drop, I'm gonna put the ball right in that void. All right? If he is in here to stop that, now I put pressure on whoever the curl flat defender is. So I mean, it's, it's a simple. I mean, it's all that. This is all our shallow, you know, you know, just like your guys' bunch route. We're, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, I like what you guys do there with the three, but we're kind of almost getting the same way. You guys get to a little quicker than us, but you know, we're Cougar. You know, same way. He's coming in, all right? Boy, ball. I right, put what. What we want to do is get a no back feel with the guy in the back field. Right? Yeah, I'm check. Yeah, I'm check too. Right. And I don't like my guy having to go through all that, you know, and the receiver and they're going, they're pointing to two guys. When they start pointing more than one guy, I get fucking confused. You know? I hear you. But I can teach my guy to do this. Yeah. Them some bitches come, give him the football, you know? And every once in a while, somebody will knock him, knock him in the face, but you live with it. But, you know, they're getting it out of their hand and they're, and they're going. I, and he doesn't have to worry about who it is or anything. It's just a, his void right there. Uh, when you look at the throw Tiger again, the jump of the day, is that what you said? Uh, Tiger's probably going to throw. All right, Tiger. All right, now the difference, if you're running Tiger, all right, you run straight crosser, how everybody's doing, that guy never stops, right? This guy never stops. On straight cross, on straight crosser, fade route, right there. All right, stretch. So there's base. There's base. All right, so now all, all, all we've done is tied this. All right. The only difference is this should turn to hunt now. All right, because we don't want him to just. You're into the boundary right here. We want him, and we'll never throw his ass the ball anyway. But we just at least like him to be a, a viable receiver in there when he starts to find windows. He sits down. That's the only thing he's got to learn that's, that's different. Right? And now this guy knows he turns to Panther, seven step post on him. Right? Tiger is when they start giving you this. Because right? what, 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 what have they done? Where are they, the weakness is here, and the coverage, the strength is there. So I want to get away from this, right? and I want to start holding him. And now work on my Willie Backer right there. Yeah. All right. So that would be when we would we would be thinking Tiger. Mostly single safety teams. So, you know, we're thinking let's call Tiger double eagle, four twos, all that kind of stuff. So how do you regulate across the three of those guys in the seven? No. Well I mean, he won't what about the dig guy? The dig guy automatically running right? On straight crossers? Yeah. No, he gotta haul ass because he's gotta clear the mic. Okay. All right. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's got to get to this side of the mic. If he's coming and the mic, and this guy walls, he's got to clear this guy. We don't want to throw it to him on that side of the mic. We want him to go, we want him to be like this on there. But now they get smart too. When they start seeing this, these kids, even though we tell him, you know, never stop running on that. I mean, you saw those kids, they'll start to get in those windows and they'll start to throttle because they'll be expecting the football. So, so at any any time on any of this stuff, any of these guys come in there, and any anything voids to them, they should they should be, you know, even if they just zone drop and it was void, they should be expecting the football to get thrown through. I appreciate it.